Welcome, welcome, welcome. I always like saying welcome three times. You have reached a Socialite Production Facebook Live. My name is Janet Cape, the, the founder, owner, however you want to describe it, of a Socialite Production. And I am super excited tonight. I know you guys are probably like, you say that for every conversation, and I mean it. But I am really excited tonight to present and introduce you guys to Miss Dijanae. But before I go into that, as we always do with our lives and our conversations, we open up with a quick prayer. So if you guys will bow your heads, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this platform. We thank you just for this time to connect and to share and to present a very awesome young lady to the world. She's already She's already been presented to the world, but to those other individuals around the world who may not know her. So God, be in the midst of this conversation. As I always say, let us hear you and see you through what's being said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All righty. So you guys, um, before I get into introducing you guys to, to the guests we have, I just want to do a quick overview, as I always do, because I cannot assume everyone knows who I am and the platform and the purpose, right? So a socialite production, a quick overview. Who are we? What we do? It's a company, but it's a platform, a social platform for uh, storytelling. So it was birthed and produced out of the pandemic, and the, the goal, the mission, um, the focus is to connect the world through faith, culture, and entertainment. How do we do that? We do that by way of authentic storytelling to help change mindsets and perspectives, to bridge the gap, to make that connection, right? And so we do this through social media, YouTube, on-site events, one-on-one -on -one in various ways. Um, if you're interested, follow us on all social media platforms. That's A Social Lights, that's L I G H T production. And then email info at a socialliteproduction.com. So that's a quick high level overview. If you want to know more, you can contact me offline. Um, but for this evening, um, really, let's say set it up for February. Of course, February is Black History Month, right? And we celebrate Black History, History Month, we go hard. But my goal for this month and beyond is to highlight dreamers, Black history dreamers, past, present, and future. You know, those dreamers who are, you know, that get motivated and inspired to dream for the future, right? And so that's a hashtag that I've been using, hashtag Black history dreamers. I've always been a promoter of people and connect people and like to um, highlight people's platforms and initiatives, right? But now, so let me do that, ha put that hashtag to it. So that way it can be, you know, captured during Black History Month and beyond. And so when we talk about dreamers and visionaries, oftentimes we, we focus on the adults or people of a certain status or well-known. We forget about those individuals right around us that are dreaming, who are just as important as those other individuals. And so I said, well, you know what? Let's go a little deeper. Let's start with the youth. And I, I I wish I can find another term because that's overly used, but it is what it is. You are the youth, you are a teen, you're still young, but they are doing so much and they need to be highlighted. They need to be promoted. They need to, they need to know that we see them and they matter and they are just as much a part of all this work that we're doing. You know, again, we're trying to build, bridge the gap. We're trying to connect, bridge the gap across generations. It's very important, y'all. So tonight, I want to highlight and talk talk to and about Dijanae Angel K, who is a 16-year-old, beautiful, as you can see, Liberian-American entrepreneur and the owner of Angel Love Crochet and, Crochet and Company. And just to give a high-level overview of her, and we you know you're going to find out more about her during the conversation, but... So at the age of 11, she fell in love with crocheting. Her mom, who's, hopefully she's there on the end, we'll bring her on, but she's just so beautiful and talented as well. So it's no surprise that her daughter is who she is, but she taught her how to crochet at, a, at the age of 11. And I guess by doing it, it sparked something, it sparked purpose and passion. So then at the age of 13, she was like, you know what? Let me start my own company. 
in which she did. Now, when this beautiful young lady was a baby, just as you see how stylish she is, she had personality and style then. So it's no surprise that she's doing what she's doing. What's unique and different about this crochet um, company, this fashion line is when you think about crochet, you're thinking about, you know, blankets and I think they call it dollies, like back in the day, how, how it was just used for household decor and blankets. This chick, and I say chick not to be offensive, has made a whole line, as you can see her wearing it and, and what's behind her. And what's interesting is she does this by herself. She designs it and she actually stitches, she, she does the crocheting by hand herself. She's also holding down her ac um, academics, um, yeah, her academics. She's in high school, but she's also taking early college courses. How she do it? I don't know, but we're about to find out this evening. And so I'll let her talk more about herself. I'll stop there. But I just want to introduce you guys to Miss Dej. I was about to say your name incorrectly. Miss Dejanae Angel Cade. I'm sorry for messing up your name, but welcome to the platform and to the live, Dejanae. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, hello, everyone. I am Dejanae Angel. Well, Dijanae Angel K, but my designer name is Dijanae Angel, and I am a crochet designer. I'm the CEO and model for my company, Angel Love Crochet and Company, which I started when I was only 11 years old. And although I have expertise in like all, um, pretty much all fields of crochet, um, I directly put my focus in luxury crochet. Why? This is because crochet luxury clothing, um, it's not really broadcasted in the fashion industry. And I believe, I know that my company can take crochet luxury clothing to the next level and have it being a important role in the fashion industry, so. Yes. So what's interesting is she just gave her 30, 30 second elevator speech. <laughs> so we talked oh about that, right? Yeah, it's so funny, but she just went, went right in it. So when I told her about the elevator speech, you know, anyone, even adults, you kind of get nervous, right? So I said, you know what? We're not going to, yeah. we're going to scratch that because I don't want to add any pressure. Again, she's on it. She just went right <laughs> in without me saying, I don't know if you recognize that, but you did an awesome job in just quickly wrapping up what you, you do um, and, and who you are. So I love it. Before we get Thank further, you. yes, before we go further, I forgot to tell you guys. So while, yes, this is a Facebook Live, Dijanae and I are dressed up because we are actually at one of my favorite restaurants in Charlotte, which is Del Fristo. And so before dinner comes, we've invited you all to our conversation at the dinner table. So this is gonna be laid back. We're not here to try to impress anyone. We're just talking, getting to know each other and we're inviting you all to the conversation. Is that okay, Dijanae? That's okay, right? Yes, yes of course. Uh, yes, yes. So, you know, if we, you know, spill something, what is we're at dinner. So if you have a problem with it, then you can leave the dinner table, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna get started with intro questions. Excuse me, we're at dinner. We don't do intro questions at dinner. We just talk. So my bad. So these are they. <laughs> I'm doing the most. But these are they. No, you're not. <laughs> so you did introduce yourself when you talked about your business, which is good. But I want to get a little bit deeper. Like, who is Dijanae? Like, not what you do, but who are you as, as a person? How would you describe yourself? I am extremely hardworking. And I strive for perfection. <laughs> it's the Virgo in me, but literally I am a perfectionist. And I believe that's why I love crochet so much because within crochet, um, you have to be perfect with your stitches. And if I see a stitch out of place, I will fix it immediately. I look at every single row, I analyze it. 
but yes, <laughs> I am a perfectionist. I work very hard in my um, line of work, but also I am in uh, Americo Liberian heritage. I have that in my bloodline. I am a strong black woman, in my opinion. I come from many, many strong black women, including my mom, my grandmothers, um, just a long line of strong black women. And I just admire them so much. Yeah. Um, I think that's where I get my passion from. And um, I also am a Charlotte teacher, early college student. So I take early college courses while also pursuing um, high school. And I basically have like the amount of credit hours for an associate's degree once I graduate That's from awesome. high school. That is awesome. Awesome. And she mentioned her mom in which I kind of touched on that, but I, I want to park there for a second because her mom, which her mom name is Jane, uh, name, she's named after her mom, but growing up in a Liberian community, as she says, she's a, um, you know, American Liberian, we both are first generation um, Liberian Americans, our parents were born in West Africa, Liberia, had us here, of course, I'm much, much older than Dijonay, <laughs> so <the> same. No. <laughs> much, much no. Older. just a little bit, just a little bit, not, not too much, but I brought that up because community is very important here and community is uh she feels that by way through her family as well in her business and we'll get into that but it's more so paying pay respect and homage to the legacy and so uh when I was younger I, I I started braiding hair and so my first job was braiding hair so the similarities she's she's doing crochet and I was braiding hair and her mom she, I used to braid my own hair, but initially she was braiding my hair, but she had this particular technique like no other. And so the way my braids will fall, like she would braid yes. it at an angle. I'm not gonna give the secret away, but she would braid it in a certain way that my bob would just fall like perfectly. And so when I braided her hair, cause we will, you know, trade off versus paying each other, paying each other, she showed me, like she showed me the craft and the technique so which with me braiding hair from age 14 to 30, that's why my braids was just, like you said, to perfection, that's how I did it. And so publicly in front of everyone, if she's watching, I'm sure she is because her baby girl is on here. Thank you, Miss Jane. And I'm saying Miss, but she's still young. Y'all will see her, but thank you for just your leadership and um, for caring because you didn't have to do that. And then just the example that you are, that you have been to me, that you are to your son, that you are to Dijonay. And then let's go a step further to her mom. Both of them are just, they're just so beautiful. So we talk about fashion. We used to look up to them. We used to look forward to seeing them out in the community because they were just striking and they were the example to follow. So I just personally wanted to say that and communicate that. And even to you, Dijonay, because you probably didn't know, but she comes from a great lineage and a great example of awesome women. So just the FYI. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Shout so. out to my mom uh, for braiding my hair, actually. It See? looks stunning. See? See? She's so talented in yes. literally every category. I think she that's is. where I take it from. She is. She can dress, she can cook, but you know, we'll stop. This is about you, not your mom. <laughs> but I, I had to, I couldn't go further without saying that. And as, as I was prepping for the conversation, I just reflected, you know, about our story in history and how your mother was a dreamer and the fruits of her labor, you and your brother, Jamal, y'all are just awesome. Like, again, I know this is about your business, but I'm trying to get people to see the heart and the character and the work ethic. And so when we talk about strong black women, you know, I had a Facebook live conversation last week because that term is great, right? To be strong, we are all strong, but sometimes that adds unnecessary pressure that yes. we aren't meant to carry, right? Yes. So we'll get into that too, but that's kind of giving a yes. preview of that. Or if you, if we can talk about it now, if you, if, if you like, but we all are strong, but we know that there's a God that we're serving that's stronger and that weight is for him, not for us. Exactly. Right. So anyway, just wanted to call that out with, with that term, strong Black woman. Um, but you talked about school. You talked about your family. Um, what do you like to do when you're not in school? 
and when you're not on the job like and it's kind of <laughs> hard not to be on because when it's yours yes you're always yes. on but when you're trying to relax and breathe and not be strong and perfect what are you doing what <laughs> I'm usually doing is I'm always dreaming so mm-hmm. you know having your eyes closed but you can still see having that mm-hmm. vision I'm forever dreaming I can see myself owning a yarn store I can see myself teaching other little black girls at home uh, or or through YouTube videos how to crochet okay guys this is what you guys have to do or teaching other minorities how to start a legitimate business so even when I'm I don't have the crochet hook in my hand and the yarn through my fingers I'm constantly dreaming about what will become in the future and I am constantly reflecting as well that's awesome that is awesome it is very important to dream some some of us and I'm saying us because adults especially it's like there's risk with dreaming because the the thought of maybe not succeeding or getting laughed at or thinking that you look fear of failure yeah and then and I always use the example like with um, Dr. Martin Luther King he had a dream right and it sounds good to say and talk about and you know what he did but if we if if I was alive during that time I probably would have been like this man crazy I don't know what how you think this is gonna happen but he is crazy right but like Pastor Michael uh, Michael Todd always says it's only crazy until it until it happens, and if you're dreaming, that's because God gave the vision to you. He didn't give it to everybody else. There are key people that are aligned to it that will come alongside, but it's like having tunnel vision and just staying focused in what what He told you. So I'm glad to actually hear you even say that. Like I'm just dreaming. I'm you know you're you're dreaming. Yeah. You're excited. So I love it. I love it. Um, So now we're going to, no, no, actually, before we get into um, some fun questions, um, I want to kind of touch on, and I guess, you know, I talked about Dr. um, Dr. Martin Luther King and him being a dreamer, but as far as, of course, since this is Black History Month, let's just park there for a second. I know you're in school and, you know, they, you know, have a curriculum around it and talk about Black history past or present, but when you think about um, Black History Month, who do you kind of reflect on or who do you admire that has made a mark in history? I definitely admire Madam C.J. Walker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And I know that she has been talked about in history, but we really need to look at what she really accomplished. Yes. She was a philanthropist. She was an activist. She was so many things and just giving her her flowers. But she really inspired me to become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. and continue with that hard work and ethic because she had that throughout her entire life. Yes, definitely. She 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 was awesome. That is a good example. Um so, we're going to do a little little I call it speed questions. Questions okay. you're not going to have enough time to think about. Just whatever comes to you. You don't, don't even there's no right or wrong answer, but I just want to see, you know, what response you'll you'll give. So you ready? I'm not gonna go that fast. <laughs> so these are they, like she's kind of like, oh my god, what's she about to say? Um, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. Why? It represents royalty. Mm-hmm. That's good. And clearly, that's that's how you look. That's who you represent. Um, what do you fear? What I fear most is failure. Mm-hmm. And as human beings. Failing does not mean that it's over. That means, okay, that plan didn't work. Let's try a new one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the whiteboard and let's cross out that plan and let's try a new one. Failing does not mean that that's the end. That means that you need to look for a new path so that that plan can work. So while you do fail, while you do fear failure, you also understand the value of failure. Yes. Yes. Okay. What do you love? What I love, I love my family. Yes, oh my goodness, I, I love my family. <laughs> Why do you love yes. your family? I love my family because they were the village that raised the child and that child being me. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I I would devote my entire life to my family, my mom, my father, my big brother. Oh my goodness, my big brother. Whew. Not even get he, on. That. He, yes, he is my rock, and yeah. my grandparents. Um, they all just protect me, and they they were they are the essential part to my life, and they make me me as well. Absolutely. And you guys, if you see me looking down, I'm monitoring the comments because I, I don't want to I don't want to miss any questions that comes in. Um, and her mother actually responded. I didn't even see that just about what I shared in the priceless memories of us and the prayer group and my mom. And I'm not going to start crying <laughs> and just, you know, her love and appreciation. So thank you for that, Miss Jane. Um, but if I can park again, I don't just feed questions for you, but in reference to your family, the village, again, circling back, that village, that village. And that's, and I'm saying that for a reason. And at the end, I'll kind of wrap all that together. But the family, the village, and all those, she loves her family and recognize their value. We do too, right? So I just want to say that again. What gets on your last nerve, Dijanae? I know something gets on your nerve. <laughs> that gets on my last nerve um when I'm starting a crochet project and you know as any designer you have an idea and you're getting started and you know okay this isn't really what I had planned let me keep going but you're halfway through and you're like nope you got to pull that thing apart and start over and that's that thing about that fear of failure but sometimes it's really good sometimes you know that failure that has led people to new innovation Sure. All of these innovators in this world, they all had to fail at least um, probably a hundred times before they got it right. Yeah. And I believe there was um, a basketball player, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been Michael Jordan or um, Kobe Bryant. But mm -hmm. anyways, they said that um, they make a hundred shots or so, but that one shot really matters. Absolutely. Um, just to, yeah. And if I can bridge myself in there, so of course this platform, public speaking, being able to just, you know, work it, I have failed in embarrassing ways, like sweat marks <laughs> under the arms, stuttering, getting, you know, all of that. But it was a part of my building. So everything you're saying is accurate. And I'm not saying I've arrived and that I'm perfect, but I'm comf comfortable and confident even in my insecurities, right? So, I love that. Yes. What is your guilty pleasure? Hmm, my guilty pleasure is definitely macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <Love>. <laughs> and the Southern side of me loves macaroni and cheese. And you know, um, it's, it's the right amount of cheese and the, the right amount of macaroni because some people take it a little bit too far with the cheese, but my brother yeah, has one like of the that. best recipes. Yes, but my brother, I love the macaroni and cheese that he makes, and I'll have to send you the recipe Let one day. Let me find out Jamal makes macaroni and cheese. I didn't know. Yes, he I throws it down in the kitchen. Hmm. He okay. throws it down. He gets All it from right. her, though. Okay, of course he does. Of course. <laughs> but I, you know what? Actually, I'm going to go to the source, because I'm sure your mom's is better than yes. you. But he's a good oh. backup. <laughs> okay now <laughs> oh you oh, never mind I don't want anyone to get in trouble okay <laughs> <laughs> and so like we said uh Dijanae is a, a, a first generation Liberian American so while she's Americanized she's also Liberianized so I want to touch on that for a second cassava leaf or palm butter if you had to choose cassava leaf or palm butter Ooh, that's a that's a hard decision now <laughs> I like uh, cassava leaf with parboiled rice. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Actually, I like jasmine rice, but that parboiled rice does something too as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Kala or rice bread? Rice bread. Yes, girl. Rice bread. I like the corner pieces too. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Fufu and soup or check rice and gravy? Chuck rice and gravy. Yeah, it's sweet. But you know, with uh, fufu, there's like some discrepancy whether you should chew it and swallow or just pure on swallow it. I have to chew it if it's me. Oh, I can't. Man. So I was told if you chew it, then you're not a real African. And they claim that I'm not a real African because I chew my fufu and I don't chew it. I like kind of gnaw on it, kind of like, press yeah, it. you know, so it's not chewing, it's just. But apparently I'm not a real African because I, I, I chew it. So we both 
we're going to go to one of the Liberian restaurants and get food for us to yeah. practice just swallowing and not exactly. it, okay <laughs> we're going to get our African card back <laughs> yes we will and I have um one more question and then we'll get more into the meat of of, of what you what you do with your business um, what's okay. your favorite food or snack or both? I know you touched on macaroni and we talked about rice bread, but are any of those your favorites? Well, my my go-to dish um, is definitely soup, but not with fufu, but with uh, jasmine rice and palm oil oh, and yeah. the okra and the rice. That's what I really like. And I've, I've liked that from since I was a little girl, but mm -hmm. my mom always made the best soup and the hot rice with the palm oil spread over it. Mm. Yeah, that's my mouth that, is watering. <laughs> yes, that's that. It sounds like that dry rice. She probably have fried fish or something on the side. But yeah, that, exactly. is, that is very good. So the last question in this intro part, believe it or not, we're still in our intro, but I think it's important. I want you guys to know more about her than versus what she does, right? So what is something about you that would surprise your family or your friends or just anyone else that may know you? What is something that would surprise? Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. Well, my family does know this, but most of my friends don't. That um, I used to <laughs> own four guinea pigs. Yes, and I am an animal lover. I love animals so much. But yes, I used to own four uh, guinea pigs for about four and a half years. Oh, wow. And then um, I passed them on to a new family. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I know it's so off topic, but that's something. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's good. The reason why I'm responding like that, because those things creep me out, but it's not about Oh my God, <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's not about me. I'm just, you know, that is interesting. Okay. That is interesting. Okay. So, okay. So let's, let's, before we get into your business and, um, you know, kind of walking through the history of that crochet, why, well, excuse me, talk a little bit about the history of it. Um, your brother was telling me a little about it and I was looking through, but I say, you know what, let me just, let me hear from uh, Bijanay. So in reference to your love for your mom introduced you to it, but what have you learned about the crochet crocheting business or the history of it that you want to share with everybody? A very, a very important topic that I learned about the history of crochet was that it was looked down upon for Black people to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it was thought that Black people do not knit, they crochet because crochet is only you know, household items or doilies or blankets, but it's never thought that you can make something to wear. And it was very, um, I found a lot of racist comments and stereotypical comments um, as if black people weren't talented enough to do knitting and crocheting or weaving or sewing, but it was, crocheting was denoted that it was just for black people and knitting wasn't for black people. Mm -hmm. And there are so many, artists out there, black fiber artists that work in both knitting and crocheting. But, um, and also I also uh, <laughs> learned about the, the word craftivism. And craftivism is where craft and activism come into play. And I read an article about black people being the original craftivism, uh, craftivists. And basically what that means is when we were African-Americans coming to America um, during slavery, we already had a lot of skills in textile work. And I also found out that slave owners used to specifically purchase uh, different slaves because of their work in textile work. But we don't learn these things in textbooks. And that's the thing. And I feel like there's so many, um, young Black artists out there that would be so interested in the world of crafting if they knew what their ancestors um, had knowledge about. You know? mm -hmm. No, definitely. It, definitely. And quite honestly, I didn't know all of those details. Only thing I knew about crocheting is just, of course, like we talked about, just what everybody already know about it, right? But just how 
you know, it was viewed and how the separation that it caused is, is, is bigger than that. And so what you're doing yeah. is huge. And again, it's the legacy of those ladies. Like I, I, I did read, I think it was Harriet Tubman and uh, Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth, yes. Like they used to crochet and I be, believe they were skilled at it, right? Yes. And so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I just think all of all of that is interesting and it's important to tell the history behind it and how timely, of course, this is Black History Month um, and we're highlighting these things. So I think it's great. Um, what about sewing? Have you ever thought about like, oh, I wanna learn how to like, as far as the sewing machine and working with fabrics or is your passion strictly on the design of the crochet? Okay, so with sewing, I do have experience in sewing. I have a sewing machine upstairs actually. Now I wouldn't say that I am a professional sewer as much as I am a professional crocheter, but I can do a little something, something, you know, give me a little needle and thread. Yeah. I can sew something up for you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but my grandmother, my mom's mom, she was a great sewer. She is a great sewer. Mm -hmm. um, I've also tried knitting one time, but I, I think crochet is more for me. <laughs> I That's try knitting one time. Ed, ed, educate me, um, Dijanae, because for some reason I thought knitting and crocheting were pretty much the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're basically, it's, it's totally okay. They're so mixed up so, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, people don't really talk about the difference, yeah. but with knitting, um, knitting, you use two needles and you use yarn and you're wrapping and looping and you're crossing right. those two needles together. Mm -hmm. But with crocheting, you hold your crochet hook in your dominant hand and your yarn in your um, other hand mm -hmm. and you're basically making other like different loops yeah. um, knitting has more of a different look than crochet knitting is more vertical or yes they make it more vertical and that's more um, abundant in stores mm -hmm. um, you, you see that more in stores knitting um, mm -hmm. because there are knitting machines however crochet does not have a knitting or a crocheting machine. So you have to make each and every one of those stitches individually. And that's what um, makes crafting of uh, crocheting so loving because each stitch that I make is made with love. Yeah. And as you guys can see, what she is wearing and what's displayed behind her was made with love <laughs> by her hand. <laughs> is that accurate? Like you made yes. everything we see right now, right? Yes. yes. And if you look at the details of it, like it's, it's just amazing. And it's a great segue into Angel Love Crochet and Company. Um, you, you know, of course, I talked about you started at age 11 and your mom definitely was your inspiration, but kind of walk us through your journey in the, in the formation of Angel Love Crochet and Company. Okay, so at 11 years old, I was taught by my mom um, how to crochet, but then um, as time progressed, I wanted to branch out from just making hats and blankets and Baby, cl baby clothing, but I wanted to make um, grown-up clothing. Mm -hmm. And I started off with making a halter top and that's where it originally started. And my brother, he walked into my room while I was making the halter top and I had it on uh, one of my mannequins at the time, but we just happened to have a mannequin for sewing reasons. <laughs> but I used the mannequin for my halter top and he came in and he saw that and he, pulled out his phone and he started recording me on Facebook and that video got a lot of positive um, uh, likes and um, a lot of positive feedback that I was crocheting because um, crocheting was mostly just seen as pillows, blankets, and hats. That's all in scarves. But after I got that positive feedback, I then <laughs> decided, hmm, okay, um, maybe I should continue to make this clothing because I really wanted to make clothing. I wanted to move on. And so by the age of 13, with the help of my family, they encouraged me that Dijan, I believe that we believe that you can start a business because you truly have passion for this. And they were the village that really inspired me to branch out and create Angel Love Crochet Company. At 13, um, I got my license 
And then for um, when I was 14 years old, um, I got my LLC to make it more of a legitimate business for my clients because that's very important. And I would also like to say that and talk a little bit about that, having a legitimate business um, that l allows your clients to trust in you, you yeah. know? And it's not just something that they see online, but they know that you're serious about what you do. And then when I was 15 years old, when, when I was 14 and a half, that's when the pandemic took place. And although there were so many horrific things that came out of the pandemic, as you said, your business started within the pandemic as well. And the full on launching of my business, um, that took place during the pandemic of 2020, March. And my business really grew exponentially. I started growing a following base and I was so happy and proud of myself. That's when I launched my first collection, um, my luxury loungewear collection for the mm -hmm. spring. And then I turned 15 years old. My business was still growing. And now I am 16 years old. It seems like time is flying by so quickly. But as time progresses, I continuously uh, try to re-innovate myself mm -hmm. never stay stagnant as a business owner you always want to keep going up and up mm -hmm. and as I see with your business you are constantly exponentially growing and that's what's so important that's what you live for you know mm -hmm. waking up every day and saying okay we're gonna go get this and tackle it what's mm -hmm. the next assignment what's the next task so yeah yeah that that's definitely true everybody wants their business to grow but I want to touch a little bit on purpose on um, on the word purpose, right? As it relates to what you do and who you are. Because on your website, when you look at the, you know, your bio, you talk about how you got a, uh, what did you say? A realization of why you were put on here on this earth. And so once you know what your purpose is and you know it's not tied to one thing, but it's tied to whatever that purpose is, in everything you touch, it makes you excited. It makes you want to grow. It makes you hungry. It makes yes. you dream. And so can you talk a little bit about that as it relates to what you said in your bio, um, uh, as far as like, you know, why you're, why you're here on this earth and your purpose? Yeah. Um, from a little girl, uh, being a little girl, I've always heard that we're so gifted and I never realized what does that mean that I'm gifted? I mean, I feel like I'm like everyone else, but mm -hmm. that's, that really wasn't true. I didn't find out my passion until I was 11 years old. I'm so grateful for that, that God gave that to me. Um, I, say, I said that in my bio that he placed me on this earth to create mm -hmm. and to spread love through art. And my art is crocheting. Mm -hmm. And that was my purpose. And he leads me every single day through anything that I do to have perseverance and have my faith within him. Mm -hmm. And I love that we had prayed every time when we were doing a Zoom meeting, yeah. because this is one of the interviews that I, I don't have any nerves at all. There's not one single nerve in my body. And it really feels like a conversation. I'm just so grateful and thankful Absolutely. to be here. Yeah. And see, and again, with a socialite production, we're here to shine light. Now we're here to highlight what you do. So what you do is awesome, but I'm more interested in you in the heart. And that's what I try to pull out. And that's why we're at Del Frisco's. We're about to eat soon. So it don't matter. Yes. <laughs> that's why you're not nervous because we're about to eat. But no, seriously, I, I'm, thank you for, for saying that. And I'm glad that's what you feel because I want this to be a conversation so that those who look at you and, and, and just admire you and really probably put all this pressure and the expectations on you, they're seeing the human side, right? And so yeah. you knowing your purpose at such a young age, that is such a blessing. Because in hindsight, when I look back when I was 11 and 16 and 15, I clearly see that I was walking in purpose. I just couldn't define it. I was still chasing a title and a degree in this, but everything I'm doing now, it just makes sense as far as what I, I did there, I um, did then. So I was still on track. I just, I didn't catch up to it. And so the fact that you know that now, and while yes, it's in crocheting, it doesn't stop there. You, you're just 16. It's going to grow and expand 
with crocheting and so far beyond. And when you talk about create and when you talk about art, I definitely see that in the clothes, but I see that in Dijonet. I see that when you talk. I see that when we, we met and you were in your UNC Charlotte shirt, but you just had so much presence about you. So you create without even trying. So just Thank know you. that your purpose and your value and your creativity is not limited to crocheting. That is a tool that God is using you for, but it expands. It's Dijonet. Thank you so much. Just, just one. I just couldn't. One. I, <laughs> I couldn't have explained it any better. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just wanted to call that out. It was you yourself, without the perfection, without the skills, without everything, you are awesome. If you were to stitch something and put the hole in the wrong place, you're still awesome, right? And I, I'm stopping here to say that because. You know, this, this trend, this conversation of being, you know, perfectionist and strong woman, and I am so guilty of that, as you can see, where I was like, okay, turn the camera this way. Okay. Oh, turn it that way. Okay, yeah. that way. Like, you don't have to be perfectly centered, but of course, I'm a profession, perfectionist, so it's the same thing. But outside of all of that, even if the camera isn't straight, I'm still perfect. Right. Exactly. And so I know you know who you are and I know you see that, but I'm I'm saying that for those individuals who are watching and also as a reminder for you. Right. So anyway, went on a tangent, but just wanted to call that out. But I love the story. I, I just I, I'm just fascinated with the fact that you can see already at this young age. And when I say see, I'm talking about vision, y'all. And I and I, and I like to use while the topic is. Black history dreamers, and we're highlighting this young dreamer. Sometimes when you speak about dreams, it's like when you're asleep and you're in la-la land and fairy tale, yeah. right? But we are dreaming with our eyes open. So no, we're not asleep. This is reality, but we can still see what we will see in our dreams because God has put it, put it in front of us, right? So yeah. All right, next question. <laughs> Let me ask you something though. I, I know you, you mentioned getting the LLC and doing all those things, but you were still young. And sometimes people don't take uh, teens and young adults as seriously. Were you taken seriously when you first said, oh, I wanna start a business or I wanna get an LLC or I wanna get a website? Like how was that received? It was received very well, and I'm so lucky to have the audience that I had um, with my following, but it was very received well, I would say that. Um, yeah, that's that's really all I have to <laughs> say about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's, good. that's good. Okay, awesome. Yeah, no, that's, and that's even more of a blessing, and God aligned your family or friends or whomever was a part of that with your vision. So that was a blessing to not have that pressure or that doubt cast it um, against right. The vision, right? So that's that's awesome. Exactly. That I, I would say that some people they were so in shock that I could do all of this that they were questioning it, but at the end they were fully on board and they were like, "We fully support you in what you do." That is awesome. You help you help them to see the vision. That's good. Yes, and, and I'm sure too with your passion and focus behind it. Even if they did have doubts, they were kind of like, oh no, this she, she's serious. Like she's on it. So, so what advice would you give to most especially someone your age, either younger or a little older? What advice would you give them about owning their own business or company, regardless of what it is? I would say that you have your own niche. And I've said this before um, in a previous interview, but it's very important. If you are going to start a t-shirt business, make sure that t-shirt business is unique in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, also start with a plan, have a designated plan. You don't want to get to a point in your um, business and say, I don't want to do this anymore because I don't know where I'm, what I'm doing. <laughs> and even if, even if it gets to that point, still, still try and pull through. Do not give up. Mm -hmm. Again, failure does not mean that it is the end. That means just find a new plan and make a new plan. Mm -hmm. I would say 
to continue dreaming with your eyes closed <laughs> or, or walk even, around mm -hmm. or you know with your eyes open either mm -hmm. way it's very important that you continue to keep dreaming see where can i be in the next five years or where can i be in the next six months sometimes um but yes that that's my advice that i would give to um young dreamers that want to start their own business have a plan and continue dreaming mm -hmm. yep you know sometimes people say have a plan a and a plan b but and i get the logic behind that but when you have a plan b then you're more likely to be like okay all right i'll just go to plan b no focus exactly. on plan a if plan a don't work and you know it's kind of like done then get another plan A. <laughs> We're focusing yes. on, you know. <laughs> exactly. Because people get defeated real quick and they, you know, get discouraged. But that's all a part of the process. It is all a part of the process. And, you know, you, you spoke about, you know, it being a lot. And just what we've covered thus far is it's a lot. And it may seem like it's overwhelming for some, and I'm sure for yourself, I know for me, you know, with what I, what I do and what I've been doing, sometimes it feels overwhelming, but you have to find that balance and you have to learn yeah. your, your blueprint for working through the challenges and having a system. So I want to touch on that because as an adult, I know the pressures and I understand it, but from a 16 year old, while the same type of pressures is different. And it may even be more or less, I don't know, but I wanna talk about the challenges and how you balance. First, being a child in your mom's house, of course, your parents' house, excuse me, um, and then going to school and then being an entrepreneur. How do you balance yeah. it? Well, for one, the pandemic, I think that was the most trying time for everyone and especially for children, teenagers, because it, it really it really affected all of our mental health. You mm -hmm. know, staying, staying in the house, but also having work to do and mm -hmm. also putting on your TV and you see all of this bad news all the time. Yeah. It's hard to stay positive. But in crochet, I found that light to relax me, to bring me back mm -hmm. to myself to let all of that negative energy go because while that years that we were in isolation and it was so hectic and crazy, it really made me to reflect on everything that I was doing, not only even on my business, but myself as well. Absolutely. What do I need to change? You know, and I'm I was very grateful for that time because yeah. that's like a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> yes. yes, but um, how do I balance school and work my business <laughs> i i definitely find time to have those relaxation days those mental health days mm -hmm. along with working hard because there are only 24 hours in the day and maybe you're awake for a little bit over half of that mm -hmm. but still you can't get everything accomplished in just one day so planning yourself out um, instead of doing it's just like if you were a student instead of doing all of your project work and we're waiting uh, last minute, you would want to pace yourself over the week. Okay, I'm gonna do this a little bit. I'm gonna do that a little bit. At the end of the week, you know, you completed about five projects. Now look at you, you're killing the game, exactly. So that's that's how I balance my work. I have a planner as well, a physical planner and I'm right in it. Yeah, yeah, I have a, I'm such a, you know, with technology it makes it so yeah. convenient, but, Sometimes you miss things because you didn't scroll, right? Whereas a planner, right. you see the whole page. It makes a difference. Exactly. So I need I need to go back to old school and, and, and get that, that <laughs> planner. So let's talk about pressure. So you yeah. talk well about balancing and you have definitely great, great um, response. And not even so much response, but great habit that you have or regimen, if, if you will. But talk about pressure. How do you handle the pressure that comes with everything pressure makes diamonds mm. and being oh. nervous yes oh, say that one more time make sure everybody hears pressure. <laughs> pressure for the people in the back pressure <laughs> makes makes diamonds okay mm -hmm. all right so <laughs> when <laughs> when you're when you're nervous that does not mean um a bad thing that essentially means to me that you care 
that you want to do well. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're not confident in what you do because you can still be confident and still have all the nerves in the world, you know, but being nervous, think about it as I care so much about this that I want to do well and find your own way how to shake nerves. I know when I'm nervous, I talk in the mirror and I look at myself and I practice what I'm going to say. And sometimes when you have um, a plan of what you're going to say, you run off the wall a little bit, but that's okay. We Mm -hmm. bring it right back in, you know, Mm -hmm. but um, I handle pressure pretty well. Um, My coping mechanisms are also crochet. And I would love to tell everyone, you don't have to make clothing with crochet. Again, you can make small things like uh, stuffed animals and crochet is very soothing for yourself. And you can start off as a beginner and gradually get your way up there to mm-hmm. being an expert if that's what you desire. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but that pressure makes diamonds. That's a good one. Because a yeah. lot of us, and I'm saying us, because again, I don't remove myself from that because depending on the day, I may be like, uh, I'm not trying to deal with no pressure. I want everything exactly. to go smooth. But who, who develops with no pressure, right? Right. And being uncomfortable, that's okay. You're not always going to be comfortable in life. And God makes sure to let you know it's not always going to be a smooth breeze. You know, you're going to go through challenges. And just think about that. And I'm referring to your video video that you made. Think about that as an assignment. Hmm. Okay? Girl. Think about it as an assignment. Okay? (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. You preach it now. You preach it. We now at church. Yeah, that's, that's the rest that's of all we at church say. now. <laughs> I'm sorry, DJNA. Let me stop interrupting you. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> that's that's all. But, but think about it as an assignment that's going to get done. Um, don't think about it as this huge mountain that you have to overcome because sometimes um as human beings, we can overescalate the situation in our head. Mm. Yes. With me, and I know with you and I, we result in God for our comfort. But I suggest and I encourage um, for watchers or viewers that you find that comfort in yourself or in God. And um, really just think about it as an assignment. Don't think about it as this huge, huge, big old thing that, oh my God, my life is going to end. It's, it's over, you know. Just think about yeah. it as an assignment. I love it. And the fact that you just watched that video and you already incorporating it, that's, that's, that's a game changer, that <laughs> thought process. It, it really is because whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's cancer, that I smashed that assignment and so thankful right. that I'm past that, whether it's, you know, me having to speak in front of a large group of people, whether it's me going to the restaurant to eat, you think, where we are now, right, Dale Frisco's, but (laughs) you think that you're just walking through life or you're just doing things. Everything is an assignment. You don't know who you're going to encounter. You don't know who God wants, you know, for you to reach or vice versa. It's assignments. Exactly. Exactly. We we all got this. We got this. And so you are rocking it out. You are passing it with flying colors, um, Dijanae. Oh, great. You, you. you are absolutely doing that. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just reflecting. When she mentioned assignment, I'm just reflecting not only on that journey that I had, but just on my life's journey. And even- It really so- changed my mindset. Awesome. 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 Even looking at the assignment your mother had, you know, coming from Liberia to Charlotte, having Jamal and then years later having you and her mom and just what you're doing and what you're going to pass down to the next generation. We have to stay under the pressure of our assignments because the world is counting on us. And while sometimes we may think, oh, it'll be all right if I don't. No, it's not because there's only one Dijonet and I've called Dijonet to do a specific assignment. Well, multiple assignments, but you know what I mean? So just to stay focused within that. Um, What I want to touch on before I get to the next question is mental health. Because when you speak about balancing it all, when you speak about pressure, it can weigh on you, on your mind and your heart, right? But you also touched on faith. And so how do you manage the mental health piece? Because when you talk about mental health, a lot of people, there's like a stigma. They, they, They align it to people who, 
are they crazy. crazy. Yeah, are crazy or need medication. Exactly. Depression. That's not necessarily the case. I could be going through a fog right now. I'm perfectly fine, but I have so much on my to-do list and I'm just kind of like, I ain't got it today. That's a mental health exactly. challenge, right? So how do you handle that um, and make sure your mind and your heart stays healthy? Um, I definitely rely on God. And I, I keep referring back to your video, but it really spoke to me. Um, a lot of times we rely on the medicine or we rely on the doctors or we rely as therapy for the primary resource when God is the primary resource that we should go to. He goes through the medicine. He goes through the doctors. He goes through the therapist. But mental health, I definitely, I talk to God first about it. I say, God, this is what I have on my mind. I pray that you can release the stress, this tension that I have, and eventually it blows over. And you always learn something from every challenge that you face. Mm. Yes. But with my um, mental health, I try my best. I surround myself with my family because they're my light in my life. Mm -hmm. And even if it's social media, just putting your phone down because it's not always good for you for Instagram. Although we love it. I love social media. But sometimes it's time to put the phone down and just relax, you know? Yes. And just tackling one thing at a time. You're just one person. Mm -hmm. You're not a superhero. Do one thing at a time and do it to the best of your ability. Absolutely. I was I was trying to compose myself because I was about to say preach because you're just you're just awesome. You are really awesome. You are really <laughs> awesome. And it's clear that you are filled. You know, God's spirit is definitely working through you. Because while, you know, a lot of times you look at mentorship or inspiration to come from an older, someone older than you, right? Or your peer, but yeah. You, you are, I'm, you know what? I'm actually probably old enough to be your mom. I keep forgetting I am not a young adult anymore, but I feel like. No, you're in your 20s, hello? Oh yeah, that's right. Duh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my point is, as young as you are, you are inspiring me. So while you got in inspiration from my um, video, Big Assignments, I'm getting inspiration at the fact that it resonated with you and you're on this platform preaching. <laughs> pretty much yeah. right so god is god is just awesome god is god is awesome and so we are about to wrap up soon we, i didn't i don't even know what time it is because this is a 90 minute conversation okay it's about 8 30 so we're still on good timing i know we've talked about vision right and it's funny because i had these questions but we just flowed so we pretty much touched on everything that i had down here but i want to park at vision again and go a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, what do you want people to take away from this conversation as it relates to vision? And again, I keep pushing it back to teens or the younger generation. While I know a lot of adults are getting a lot out of what you're sharing, but I want to I want you to speak to your generation. So we're at Del Frisco's, right? And there's a table beside us. It's like 12 year olds, 16 year olds, they are really rowdy or whatever, but I keep seeing them look over here. So when you speak, I want you to capture their attention and, and talk to them about vision and whatever they're seeing. Just, just talk to them about vision. Well, about vision, I know that in life, especially at a younger age, there will be distractions. Hmm. And sometimes you wanna follow the crowd. Sometimes you want to act radical because you think that's the big trend or you think it's cool. But at the end of the day, know who you are. Are you this type of person that is radical or are you a person that has a dream that wants to pursue it in life? Don't always follow that negative crowd. Surround yourself with positive people that want to do better, that who wants to, they want to be better as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, no, I was saying yeah. yes, I was agreeing, sorry. Yes, yeah, it's okay. But uh, yes, I would say as a young person, this is the time now to figure out who you are. It's important now. Of course, you can continue developing throughout your life because people always change. 
I think the average change is every seven years or so. That's the statistic from a while ago. Mm -hmm. But you're always evolving. But I suggest there's it's never too young or too early to start developing who you are mm -hmm. as a person. Yeah. And I know that we'll go through mistakes and challenges that makes up each and every one of us. But start developing who you are now. Absolutely. It starts now. And, you know, like you said, because I, I just want to piggyback on that. There's definitely levels because exactly. as you grow, as you discover, as you master that press pressure, then that's a new level of discovery. And then there's a new level, like it's never ending. But the beauty is you learning and growing and developing and continuing to cultivate whatever God wants you to, you know, learn from each, each experience. But definitely when you have the mindset that you recognize it, recognize it and being intentional, that's what's key. And I see two of them looking over here now. So you did a good job. You got their attention. <laughs> and I was trying to, I was looking at some of the comments. We have more comments than questions. And I'm going to kind of read through some of them. But one of them, I think this is either Tanya or Kisa slash Jackie. Um, can I schedule a, a coaching session with her? I need her in my life is what they said. <laughs> Yes, you. With you. Yes. Hey, they're offending me. Uh, they're disregarding me. They talk about you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. I'm just going to scroll through some of the comments real quick. Um, someone says, I love the royal the royalty that's all over her. That's Charlize Blackwell. And then of course, your brother, our future UNCC 49er, but I would say our current, because you're already there, but I know what he means as far as graduating. Um your mom said how, well, she called you her baby. You're going to be her baby. Even when you're 50, you're still going to be her baby. Yes. FYI. Yes. She says, your, um, my baby is so humble about her success. She don't brag to her peers in school about it. That's, I'm glad I read that comment because let's park there again. We're going to go back a little. Yes. How do you, you know, the way we're having this conversation, the way you present yourself, I know you're still a child but you have such a presence about you that you're set apart from your generation. So that makes me wonder, how do you, how do you um, engage with your peers at school? Because you're above, like you're not, not above anyone, but I mean, it just in, in reference to how you carry yourself, how does that align to the peers at school and how do you just engage with them or encourage them, talk to them? How, talk, talk about that a little bit. Well, a form of engagement is that I have a lot of my peers that come to me for advice, mm. you know, and whether that's about business or just about their personal life. Hey, Dijanae, or hey, D, I have something that I want to talk to you about. Can I get some advice on this? And I feel so honored every time. I'm like, oh my goodness, you chose to come to me yes, for dude. advice? Oh my gosh. But it, it really makes me feel great. And even on, it was probably the first week of 10th grade of this school year. And I didn't mention to, any, to anyone that I had a crochet business. And there is this uh, one girl in my, I believe my second period class. And she said, did y'all know that Dijanae has a business? And she didn't even say anything about it. And I, I kind of just, I was like, oh, yeah. okay, uh, you know, but um, everyone started admiring me and asking me why I didn't say anything about it sooner. And I said, well, I'm just so humble about it, you know, and for people that do find out about my business, I don't pressure you to buy, but for small black business owners, it matters so much that you like, that you follow, that you share, that you comment. That means so much to us because that puts us out into the world for others to see. Mm -hmm. And you do not at all, if a business pressures you to buy, I mean, that does not represent all of us, okay? We, we encourage you to support us in so many more ways than just buying from us, but it's always appreciated. Absolutely, and you, you summed that up very well, because obviously you create a business to be supported, right? And to have impact, but I'm not about to beg you to do anything, right? So exactly. that's what, yeah, but you're allowing, <laughs> you're allowing people to see the value. 
and by exactly. liking and sharing and commenting, you know, it pushes it out even further to reach so that others can experience angel love crochet, crochet, right, and company. And so it's more than just having followers. It's about having that reach for impact. So you you mm -hmm. definitely you definitely kept capture that well. And thank you for 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 talking through that because what you did what you what you did not say but said is you are a leader a humble one and i would even add a servant leader right mm -hmm. and i want to pull your brother in this conversation but we we're going to you know I, i'm 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 going to let y'all meet her brother because it it will just make so much sense what you're what who you're seeing and then when you meet her brother and then see her mom, it just makes sense. And it's just a legacy of excellence that's just being passed around. I need to come over there and get a little bit of, get, get a little bit of- Well, I we'll have to book a reservation at the, at the restaurant. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so yes, yes, you are a leader. Um, let me read a little bit more of the comments. All of them aren't loading. So if I miss anyone that said a question or a comment, please forgive me, but I'm- Hey, Joe! So, <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey, already on camera. Who are big, you? Big brother, big brother daddy right here. Big hey, brother can you daddy introduce daddy. yourself to the people, Mr. Jamal? Yes, my name is Jamal Stewart. I'm the creative director for um, not only Dijonay, but my own brand, but uh, a lot of the artistic developments that has been going on with uh, Angel of Crochet. I have assisted with it. I, it's not all my doing. I just assisted with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, and as big brother daddy and uh, manager and <laughs> operations manager, I just try to give her the tools and resources to be a great leader, one, and then yes. a great businesswoman. Absolutely. At the end of the day, this is what Angel Love Crochet is all about, making sure that this young Black woman becomes a a businesswoman and have the foundations to pass it down to her children absolutely and generations to come as we know that women of color days that prior that, that dates prior to ourselves they didn't have this opportunity it was very far sought and in between but now with the the many resources that are in our hands and when we have children that are talented, instead of saying, oh, no, 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 there's a particular route that they need to go, when a child has a vision, pour into that vision because you never know where their destiny could be. So I'm not here to take over. You know, uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, A Socialite Productions will see me at another date and we will <laughs> have our time. And you know how I get when I start to talk, but that is my involvement. And, uh, I'm so proud and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Yeah, he's definitely very much involved on this team. Like yeah. he has his own fashion line or fashion brand, excuse me, gentleman brand. And we'll talk about that at another time. But he sacrificed even working on his business sometimes to make sure that his younger sister slash yeah. daughter <laughs> uh -huh. um, succeed. So it's 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 that servant that servant heart and that's they they care about each other they love about love each other and they are a team and they see the vision and see the purpose and so it's not about themselves it's about what they are doing together so I love it thank you for jumping on and and while you at it is your mom around will she want to come and say hey or is she I think she she can definitely come at a done at another time. Okay, okay. She no, might be, uh, yeah, working. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I put her on the, put on the spot. I should have said something in advance, but I'm glad we glad we had Jamal. Um, so let me look to see if there are any more comments. Someone said in all caps, "You better preach." I know they were talking about you when you were talking. Um, your mom again said, "My baby is constantly reminding us to build positive." Um, and just stay focused on look at that. She goes, Hi, Miss J. Yeah, look, yeah, this thing like, she my made. hair is like yours. I need a, I need a, yes, dye. yes. I'm trying to profile these glasses. But yes. thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Angel of Christian Dijonay really appreciate the family, appreciate you, yes. we appreciate your family as well. And 
I was crying and booing seeing you guys because like I told her, you did my hair at an early age. And she said, what? I said, yes, we've come a long way. Long way. Here we are, Here we are today. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, uh, they tell me I talk too much, so I'm going to say hello. No, you know, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know she has her earbuds in, so they got to get close so they can be heard. Yeah, yeah. So, now, is your grandmother there? No, my grandma, she might be upstairs snoozing. Oh, okay, but... <laughs> no problem, no problem, no problem. But this has been awesome. This has been awesome. I'm going to see if there's any other comments. It's a lot of comments. Oh, there's a question. Oh, my God. There's a question. See, so again, I'm scrolling. I stopped. Let me see the time. Okay, yeah, we're still good on time. It's almost nine o'clock. Um, Charlize Blackwell asks, wait, let me make sure that she has a group of friends. Do you have a group of friends who can relate to where you are in business and age? And if not, who is your support group within your age? So we know you have your family, your brother, but do you have any peers that get it? Or even if they don't get it, they're supporting in a way that's similar to how your family supports? Well, there's no other support like my family and my supporters and followers, just like you. I consider you my close family. Oh my goodness. Well, of course, right? But <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Um, but, um, I phrase this in a in a great light. There's not really, at my school, um, there aren't many entrepreneurs that I can relate to, but through social media, I can relate to multiple entrepreneurs. So yeah. thank God for social media to branch out and um, embrace, really reach out to, you know, yeah. those other entrepreneurs, um, especially within the crochet community there are multiple young um, artists that really they they when they send me their dms that means so much to me when they yeah. say oh my goodness how did you start your website i would say okay well this is what i did you know you can yeah. start off like this for a beginner i love that when you send me dms or you have questions ask me questions yeah. it doesn't hurt anyone especially as a small black owned business owner i would love to bring up um, young dreamers and teach them how to do this. Absolutely. Thing. And yeah, your content is polished. And again, I know Jamal is being humble, but he definitely is a big part of that. But he's only helping to execute your vision, right? Yes. You are the yes. creator, of, meaning your creation of your of your your business, your your purpose, you know, the innovation behind it. So like I said, it's it's just a, a great team. Like you can have the best production person, the best whatever, but if you don't have that vision to communicate, you know what I'm saying? Well, what can they exactly. create from? So I, I, I just think it's awesome. And that was a great question that Charlize asked. Um, oh, and she also said, yes, that's awesome. She's just a leader of the pack. You are, you are. But yeah. like this social media, you will attract those other leaders where y'all can collaborate. So it's not like you're always leading. You're going to meet other peers that you can grow from as well so yeah. you don't have to carry the weight all on your shoulders by yourself but you can handle the pressure yeah. <laughs> so since we're talking about you know social media and and website can you we're going to wrap this up can you tell them tell everyone how they can find you on social media um your website if you're on youtube just share all that that business information okay Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you caught me right at the end, um, thank you for making it this far. Um, but you can reach me at, well, on Instagram, at Angel Love Crochet. Crochet is spelled C-R-O-C-H-E-T, company, C-O-M-P-A-N-Y. And also um, in my... Instagram account. You can also find my TikTok account as well. Okay. Uh -oh. Am I back here? Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and oh, for my website, my website is www.angellovecrochet, C R O C H E T, company.com. Uh, there you can find all about me, my shop, my clothing, home goods, if you will. 
and also um, custom crochet. You can fill out a form if you want to inquire about something special being made for a special occasion that you might not find on my website, but questions are always welcome. And you can also find my blog. I just created a new blog, uh, a new blog post about Black history and activism. And since it's Black History Month, I thought I would shed light on the history of crochet, but specifically on Black people and their role in crochet. So. So, and then lastly, your email, your business email. And my business email, thank you for reminding me, is <laughs> angellovecrochetcompany at gmail.com. So it's basically the same app for everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you on YouTube yet? No, I am not on YouTube okay. yet. So that creative I am looking slash, forward to it. Yeah, the creative director slash manager slash big brother of a uh, baddie of yours. That that's just a you know, because y'all have really, really great content and it's just another avenue to advertise. You don't even have to create new content, just go back to the archives. Oh my right? goodness. That, that's such a great idea. Yeah, like for the, the video reel that I did of, of you. Because usually I like put that stuff together. I was like, I ain't about to do this work. I went right to your Instagram. I reposted and I just, so thank you, Jamal. Thank you, <laughs> Dijanae, for making my job easy. But yeah, it's, it's just so many options. And I, I think, you know, while we a lot of times talk negatively about this generation and about social media and about this and that, we're missing the opportunities and the purpose. It's like the game has changed. Any pretty much anybody can get have a platform and do foolishness, right? But right when you have a real purpose, you have so much. Um, what am I trying to say? So so many resources, free resources that people had to pay for back in the day for marketing for you know it's just so much opportunity and so. My really take soul. advantage of that. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. And you definitely have been taking advantage of it. And I am so proud of you. And while I know we're at, we're currently at Del Frisco's, we're about to wrap up so we can eat our imaginary food. <laughs> but I do want to say that whenever you're ready, I am going to take you to the real restaurant, Del Frisco's or whatever your favorite restaurant is. But I want to go to a, a upscale, an elegant restaurant and you wear one of your best outfits because that's promotion as well and before we go I'm going to come and see what I can fit so that we both can be rocking your line yes. we, we are going to go yes. now I'm serious so when you're ready you let me know on me on a social okay oh my goodness thank <laughs> you so much no problem at all thank you for just who you are and I'm, I'm so glad that you just relaxed and allowed yourself to shine. And, and it's, this, is, this has just been awesome. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of you, um, not just on Facebook Live, but on syndicated television, on runways, on just, just everywhere, everywhere that God is taking you. And I am so proud of you. And I just want to encourage you and to remind you that Whatever big assignment that God gives you through your business, through school, through whatever else you encounter, know that you don't have to be strong. He is. And as long as we are strong and walking around, sometimes we're, we're um, blocking his ability to work through our weakness, right? So while you are strong, but know you are strong because of him and you can put all the weight on him all the pressure, all of the challenges, he got it, right? Yeah. But thank you everyone for tuning in and for rocking with Dijanae, Angel Cade and a social light production. Um, but yeah. just, just thank you guys. And this, is, this conversation was everything that I wanted and expected. And so we're gonna take a selfie. And after the selfie, I'm gonna leave you with the last words and then we're gonna close yeah. out. Okay, so you ready for okay. the selfie? Lord, help me do this right, because I don't, we were doing pictures earlier and she was just making me all kind of shame. Okay, let me see. <laughs> you ready? What? Yeah. Oh, see, see, that's not, you cheating. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You do you, I'll do me. I'll do my regular style. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Um,
See, my computer does this every time. Let's try this again. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. There we go. And I'm not going to do any more because it's going to embarrass me. But thank, oh, okay. <laughs> thank you again, everyone. Dijanae, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes. Last words. Thank you so much, um, <laughs> Ms. Jonette, for this opportunity. Again, this is, I have never felt like so nervous list for like an interview before and i feel like it's literally like we're in front of each other at a restaurant just having a conversation you're such a talented interviewer and you really have this passion and talent and viewers i please this is the example right here okay <laughs> she, she's doing it like no other i've never had an interview where it's like that makes me feel so comfortable oh. um and also, thank you guys for listening so much. Again, my name is Dijanae Angel, and I am the owner, model, CEO of Angel Love Crochet and Company. Thank you. Yes, I'm so proud of her. Everybody, have a good night. Dijanae, you stay on. We're going to connect once I go off live. But thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Bye. <laughs> Let's see.